Hi, I'm Dawn Hilton Williams with Urban Eats and I went vegan in 2016 because my husband had a health scare. Uh, it wasn't for all the other reasons, the other reasons I was aware of, but I wasn't dealing with, but my husband had a health scare that I really thought was going to change the trajectory of our lives for good. And I had already seen a couple of documentaries and because I'm in the food business, I was kind of resistant to making the change. But when my husband had the health scare, I knew it was time to make the change immediately. So that's what we did. Immediately the sleep was better uh, for both of us. His snoring significantly reduced. He was a former um, football, collegiate football athlete and um, took a lot of hits and he had some memory issues. Those started to rebound a bit. Being vital and alive and working out longer and um, you know doing fitness longer worked out really well. Uh, what I noticed immediately again, our palate started to change in 30 days. There was no missing meat. There was no missing the flavors of meat. It was just the ex exploration of the vegan journey and seeing how many different beans and what kind of things we could do with 80,000 beans and fruits and nuts and the adventure. It became an adventure for us. So that was exciting. The other things that changed for us uh, were our health outcomes. Neither one of um, the health scare uh, was just a scare and that's what it was. It did change our lives, but we both lost um, quite a bit of weight. Um, we were more vibrant and more alert. My alert, I wasn't, didn't have a lot of brain fog. Brain fog went bye-bye, as did our cost. Food costs changed, our economics changed. We saved a lot of money and we saved animals and um, the environment in the process. The most important reason for me to be vegan right now is to be a, a community advocate to really help others that are watching because I'm in the food business, in the food space and have a company to make sure those who are watching know the importance and the value from a nutritive perspective of changing their health outcomes and that we can control our health destiny. It's important for me to be a representative in my community that speaks to food justice and food advocacy the right way, not talking about healthy moderation we're talking about radicalizing wellness so it's important for me to be that that spokesperson there's so many reasons others should be vegan um, you're going to reduce your your climate problems that we're having significantly make an impact on that you're going to save lives and not watch your loved ones perish from diseases that are preventable treatable and reversible you're going to make a difference in your community as far as uh, economically and geographically. You're gonna kind of change the climate of communities with better health care. You're gonna reduce the cost of health care by 3.1 trillion before the, pan before the other pandemic, which is coronavirus. We had a pandemic before that called the health care, you know, our health environment. Our whole country was in a pandemic of food prior to that. So you're gonna change the um, health care uh, cost strata and we're just gonna make it better for animals and people and in the environment. It's gonna be better for everybody and the climate, especially for our grandchildren and for our families. I encourage others to be vegan through community efforts. I do, I go out and do food justice um, campaigns. I go out and give away food in communities, sampling flavorful vegan food. I call it flavorful, um, F-L-A-V-A. Uh, because when you go to communities that are disproportionately impacted by chronic diseases, which are traditionally black and brown communities, um, indigenous communities, and communities uh, that are poor, you have to go with flavor because, you know, food in those communities is about an experience, it's about family, and it's about flavor. Because uh, I can go all the way back to slavery on why that is. Uh, we had to make scraps taste like fine dining. So um, in communities of color, food has to taste good. So I go out and I do flavorful vegan food in communities of color and I give that, give that out. We go in communities where, again, we're having major issues with food health disparities and food insecurity. And I go out and do that. I do food talks. I go out and do demos in communities and just do a lot of um, free recipes. And I'm a cookbook author and I just teach people how to eat better. So that's what I do to try to make an impact on community health. So challenges I had becoming vegan um, was more was more business related. I, I, I'm one of those people that are, I'm a deep diver. You have your, your people that step in the water and put their toe in. Then you have the people that just jump right in. So I've always been the jump right in type. So once I made the decision to go vegan, it was no, I was deep diving. So it wasn't a problem that most people have of, oh, I'm missing certain meats and I'm missing dairy. No, I didn't have that problem. My problem was I had a business and my business Urban Eats and I still have that business was a food business. 
and I was catering for hospital systems, catering for communities, going on TV, talking about healthy food. And I was serving people grass fed, organic, eco-friendly foods that were killing them. So I had to think, I had to rethink my business model. And in the first 30 days, I flipped my business model to from animals to vegan and I lost 95% of my business right away. So it did have an impact and that's how it was challenging initially to make that change because I knew it was going to hurt the business, but I knew I was hurting people. Once I took a whole food plant-based nutrition course at eCornell and that course uh, in that 30 days, I took that course the second day after going, knowing I was going to go vegan. I took that course and I knew I would never serve people meat and dairy again. And if it cost me the business, it was going to cost me the business. So that was the challenge. The challenge was um, the economics of it. I had a business coach and the business coach was saying, do vegan options. You don't have to go vegan. And at that time, not everybody was doing vegan options yet. It wasn't big. Um, people were dabbling with it, but not really doing it. I didn't want to do vegan options because I, I knew enough to know that anything I serve people that had dairy or meat or animal was hurting the environment hurting their health and hurting animals. So I just, I just couldn't do it. If I couldn't feed my family the food, I certainly wasn't gonna feed it to my clients. So I lost them, but after about, it gave me time to study, uh, to go to a lot of plant-based education conferences, not VegFest, I, I love VegFest, those are good. But I went to um, the uh, curriculum-based, plant-based education conferences, and I got to meet a lot of clinicians, uh, got to uh, spend some time really refining my recipes, uh, for vegan um, food versus that being a side. I turned that challenge into an opportunity is what I'm trying to say. And in doing that, um, it helped my business and it helped my community. Uh, and in those cases, when we're talking about challenges, most people have challenges with their family members, especially if they're married. Their other half may not want to go vegan. So in my situation, I was pretty lucky in that my husband supported it because he had the health scare. So I was trying to help him and save him. Uh, and I, and I'm, I guess I'll segue right there into my father. Seeing my husband have the health scares he had, it made me think of my father who had a massive heart attack after having a diabetic, a uh, couple of toes removed and some really bad situations with diabetes. And he uh, had a massive heart attack and I found him no longer living. And it was a very violent uh, experience because I saw the room. It was as if a tornado had hit it. And when my husband had his health scares, he had more than one, but the one I mentioned was the last one. Um, I didn't want to find my husband in the way that I found my father. So I didn't have that challenge. Uh, my challenge uh, was not with my husband. My challenge was with the business. But my family, it really was difficult to get my family to understand we weren't going to die of protein deficiency and there's nothing wrong with the vegetables. And it was, those were just annoying. Those weren't really challenges. Uh, but having my husband on board made this process a whole lot easier, actually. I regret that I didn't go vegan earlier. When I first saw Forks Over Knives, I wish I had done it then. I went vegan for two months. I'd seen Forks Over Knives and I went vegan for two months after seeing it. I took the whole family vegan. The kids were still in the house. We have a blended family. We both brought one kid to the table, two girls. My daughter was a tennis athlete um, and she's a collegiate tennis athlete. So she was running around with USCA. I was feeding her cheese sticks and, and deli meat, all this cancer causing food and processed food and animals. I wish I had done it as, as a parent earlier so that I hadn't exposed my uh, bonus daughter and my daughter to animal uh, foods because it's harder to get them to change. Uh, and it would have been better had I done it earlier. As far as parenting, I wish I had done that differently. As far as me, I wish I had just, when I saw Forks Over Knives, I wish I had stuck with it. My business coach kind of said, well, I don't, you know, you can do that personally. You know, I wish I had done it earlier, just better decisions. Other than that, um, other regrets, feeding clients food that was killing them. When I called it Health Wealth, I was saying that Urban Eats was this healthy company. And I feel like it was an unintentional deception, but I deceived clients out of ignorance and I will never do that again. And I regret that I'd ever done, done it. I didn't go vegan sooner because I ignored the reality. That's why they don't put windows on factory farms because they don't want you to see it. And then the only time I thought of it was when I see a chicken truck and I didn't see them until I was in South Carolina. I saw these chicken trucks and I was appalled by the chicken trucks. So for three or four days, I wouldn't eat chicken. I didn't go vegan sooner because it was when you're in the store, it doesn't look like the the chicken it doesn't look like a cow it doesn't look like a lamb or goat or i was desensitized to the real cruelty of animal slaughter in the animal industry and factory farming i was willfully ignorant 
and that's just the truth of it. I didn't go vegan sooner because it I was willfully ignorant along with so many other zombie light people walking around uh, pretending like the packaged cuteness at, at this, these particular stores uh, didn't cause wasn't a pain to get to the to the store. It wasn't somebody else's loss and suffering that got the food to the store and that it wasn't killing us. Um, clearly, uh, I just wasn't using intelligence. I was just following the, the pack. When you're looking at food and you're in a store, and I, I shop all the time because I'm in, well, we all shop all the time because we eat, but I shop differently. I'm shopping uh, not just for retail and for the family. I'm shopping for business, and um, you, you don't see it as what it is. When I see the word hamburger, I, they make it so you don't see a cow. I mean, it just looks like some ground up meat, and it's really the flesh of a, of a sentient being. I never worry about nutrients because um, because I took the course at um, Cornell, the E-Cornell course, I'm, I'm well-versed. And I had that whole nine months of nobody ordering any Urban Eats food uh, or working from, with my business. I had nine months to di deep dive into nutritive, the nutritive benefits of a plant-based lifestyle. I'm a nutrient, walking nutrient uh, farm uh, filled with all the good phytonutrients, minerals, vitamins, and uh, everything that you need, the body needs fiber to be healthy in every way. So um, no, don't worry about nutrients at all. I was really nutrient deficient when I was eating dead animals. And you know, that was when I was nutrient deficient because even people that eat animals are B12 deficient, which is something that happens, anybody, everybody should take B12. But no, only thing I think about is the B12, which um, I should have been thinking about when I was eating animals, but I didn't because I was not, um, again, the Cornell, that course with everybody should take it. So it's great. My physician is a, a lifestyle medicine practitioner. Her name is Beth Motley, Dr. Beth Motley. And I tend to go to lifestyle medicine practitioners as my primary care. I see them and it's always a fun conversation. We're normally just talking about how the kids and how's life because our, our numbers look great. Our um, blood work comes back great. And there's not a whole lot to talk about um, outside of you're eating a little more junk food, you need to lose some weight. Okay, I'll do that part. But no, B12. Um, anyone uh, reduced to B12 and D3 is just sunshine. So in the winter, I make sure I get my D3 because I can't get outside as much as I would if it was summer or spring. But other than that, just B12. I'm a foodie, so chef and a foodie. So my food tastes vary every day. I might want lentils for breakfast. Uh, uh, I might want a lentil stew for breakfast. I might want uh, uh, tofu, a scrambled tofu for breakfast. Um, I tend to want pancakes on the weekends, so I make my vegan pancakes on the weekends. Tofu scrambles, sweet potatoes, sometimes I just have sweet potatoes in the morning with roasted broccoli and um, um, roasted garlic that is very sweet when you roast it. And I put that on there and that's my breakfast. So I'm no longer a traditionalist about what I should have at what time of day. Uh, my typical eating day, I'm going to get my beans, greens, nuts, legumes, and um, uh, whole grains in and my veggie, my fruit. So I love blackberries, my, I love blackberries, I love all the berry family. The berry family, except for raspberries, they're a little strange for me. But other than raspberries, the berry family is a good friend. I don't really do smoothies a lot uh, because I like, my, I like to macerate my food. So I don't really have a love affair with smoothies, but if I'm in a hurry, I'll grab one and I'll add some greens to it, spinach, make sure I get my leafy greens in. And um, cruciferous vegetables are great. I mean, there's just so many. I have so much more of a diverse, my food world opened up even more largely when I became vegan. The whole world is open to you. It's not a side anymore. It's everything. So I just have such a great option, so many great options now. It depends on where you are in your journey. If you're one who was a heavy meat eater, I was. I was a heavy meat and cheese eater. So um, everyone's not a deep diver. So get started by just, uh, going and finding some people who really do know how to do vegan food and enjoy a meal with them at their home. Don't go to a restaurant. Start off, see if you know, if you don't know a vegan, you have to go to a restaurant. But nine times out of 10, you know somebody who's gone vegan. And go eat what they're eating at their house, someone that's been vegan for a minute. They're gonna give you an introduction to vegan in a much more comfort food way, in a more comforting way. That's not so, um, restaurants can be hit or miss. You might go to a restaurant that's vegan and, and the food is bland and you're used to flavorful food, especially in the communities of color. So um, I suggest you go to someone's home or you veganize what you normally might enjoy. If you usually enjoy lasagna, 
make a lasagna minus the meat and just use um, and don't use um, ricotta use uh, tofu instead of use a tofu ricotta um, and use your vegan mozzarella um, just just switch things up um, here's my cat lucky lucky you coming in she might come in I'm sure you see her guys that's lucky lucky's a rescue cat so anyway she likes to be in the scene apparently she wants to be seen hi lucky Lucky, my daughter found her on her college campus, and Lucky was, she, she was, it was 30 degrees outside, and she was walking around a campus of 10,000 people, and what she did, so you're here for the whole thing, aren't you? What she did was she stood in front of Nadia and was walking in the sidewalk with the other kids, and Nadia said, um, stay here, stay outside in front of her dorm, and Nadia got her tennis bag and stuffed her in her tennis bag and stuck her in, snuck, um, snuck her in the emergency fire exit, and then I suddenly, I got lucky. Nadia said she saved a life. I said, great. Not that as a person, but a cat is a life. It's a sentient being. So I went and um, scooped her up two hours away, and she's been with me ever since. Anyway, that's lucky. If you have a love for animals and you eat meat, visiting an animal sanctuary will help you realize that you should not eat meat uh, because that, that, that's a part of not loving animals. Uh, doesn't, it's kind of odd. So if, you, if your bent is environmental, then you should um, look for groups that are... Uh, can kind of help you in that journey that are also vegan because environmentalists can be sometimes not vegan which is odd also to me um, but the real way to do it is veganize your plate just try something at home that you're your, like a favorite meal and just take the meat out of it and replace it with a a plant-based option not a, i'm not a junk food vegan advocate i don't advocate for a lot of the impossible this and the beyond that that's not what i'm interested in advocating so I would say mushrooms give you that meaty texture and that umami flavor. You have tofu, which is very protective against cancer, contrary to what you may have heard. And um, tofu, and if you properly uh, prepare it, it can be crispy and delicious, crispy on the outside, moist on the inside. And um, there are just so many vegan options that you can do to replace the meat in your dish. So I just say do meat replacements that aren't uh, uh, junky, that aren't highly processed. Um, but if you need to start that way, because some of you are going to say, but what about those people that need the beyond? Okay, if it's a cookout and it's 4th of July, this is my only thing. Go get the, do the, whatever that is. And, and put some peppers and onions on it. And hook people up and, and trap them. Trap them, that's how you get them in. You can do it that way. But um, I suggest you try it. Um, just trying it is a start. But don't get caught up in the fake meat fake the faux meats in the highly processed vegan process thing because it's not going to it'll lead you back to eating animals watch a couple of um documentaries read some books um there, i'm sure there are tons of resources on vegan link you'll find and um, you can even get my book flavor my plate your tasty vegan guide to health wealth i do have one here so this is my cookbook it has about 50 recipes in here that will help you on your vegan journey and even gives you the protein and fiber content of everything you're eating and there are lots of other books out here. Mine's just one of many good books that can help you on the journey. Dr. Campbell's daughter, she has a really good cookbook. And then there's Dr. Michael Greger. He has How Not to Diet. He's got recipes in there. I mean, they're just a ton of free resources. So find those. Nutritionfacts.org is one that I always recommend. It's easy access, free, lots of short clips that are easy to digest for people who aren't heavy on books but don't like long videos. There's all those crowds out there. Um, but it's very evidence-based, funny. Dr. Michael Greger is hilarious, but also educational. So I love that. And then there's Dr. Milton Mills plant-based nation.com. I think he's a resource. Um, uh, Colin Campbell, Dr. Colin Campbell's uh, whole food plant-based nutrition course at E. Cornell. There is expense there, but it is worth every penny and you'd love it if you took it, and it really gives you a holistic look at the food system and how food systems impact and, and government and how all that's tied in to um, health and what we need to change. Uh, your local vegan societies and local vegan veg fest and veg events, those are very good. Vegan Summer Fest, which is called, I think, Vegan Summer Fest is wonderful. So we, you have a week immersion into the vegan experience, like Vegan Summer Camp. So I used to go to camp, I used to go to camp in Hendersonville, North Carolina. But this Vegan Summer Fest, which is in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and it is like a vegan summer camp. All the day you get vegan food of all variations, and you get to hear all this evidence-based information from all these learned clinicians. You get to see demos. Those, that's a great one. Um, Peapod, um, Plant-Based Prevention of Disease, is another great conference. Bob does that one. 
always has a great diverse uh, uh, group of people at his conferences. I think he does them in two or three cities now, two or three cities, and it switches up. So look for Peapod. Urban Eats, H-E-R-B-A-N hyphen Eats. That is my business. I have a lot of resources on my website as well and gives you information about my events. It's called Ed Summit, Eat, Drink, Disrupt, Chronic Disease Summit. I do it in New York. South Carolina, and I'm adding North Carolina to the list. So it's a very clinical conference that happens to have food, but it's much more clinical. It's much more evidence-based, not whole veg festy. There's there's food. There's food there, but it's much more focused on why you should change your plate to help your health outcomes. To help with your health outcomes. That's what my my conference is about. So Ed Summit. So there's uh, there's quite a bit out there. And nutritionfacts.org, the best one. NutritionFacts.org, hands down, love it. Me out in the community and communities of color, that what I hear a lot is veganism is, is too expensive. I can't find uh, the food that I'm looking for. One, they can't find the food they're looking for. Depends on the community where you live. There's poor access to vegetables, right? And if their vegetables are there, they're, they're, they're either in poor quality or they're overpriced. So there's a problem when it comes to food insecure communities or food apartheid communities, where there's a whole structure of um, institutional matters that have caused a lack of access to these foods. So in communities of color, is an access problem. And that's why someone would start vegan when I'm in the community and giving out the samples, and then two weeks later I come back and they don't have access to the food, and there's that whole barrier. So that's a tougher one to climb, but the more common um, issues I hear are, uh, I don't know what to make. I don't know what to make. It takes too long for me to make these foods. I just have to get some good cookbooks that don't have all these long, complicated recipes in them that are cumbersome and annoying, something that you wouldn't do with regular recipes, so certainly you shouldn't try them for vegan. Veganism is simple, but uh, I think people think it's complicated uh, because they're overthinking it. Just think beans, greens, legumes, nuts, uh, vegetables, and fruit. But here's the problem. If you have trouble in a community finding stores, and you're surrounded by uh, an oversaturation, a hypersaturation of fast food restaurants and junk food and, and stores that family dollars or stores like that that have highly processed food in them, it's going to be challenging. So that's something the vegan community, I think, needs to address in general in helping those communities to, to change those outcomes. So if you are having um, trouble uh, transitioning to the plant-based lifestyle, uh, find yourself a, a, a plant-based physician. You go to plantbaseddoctors.org and you can find that. That's a resource. It's free, plantbaseddoctors.org, and connect with a plant-based physician and a plant-based chef. There are plant-based chefs in almost every city. And if you go to a vegan society or find a vegan group, you're going to find some people that can help you with that. I always find out on my website and on Instagram that I don't even know I'm helping people, but I always get these, I get these nice stories and they usually come at great times and I'm thinking I'm not reaching anybody because I really focus on communities that look like me because I know that's where the disproportionality and health outcomes are. And I know that that's where a lot of the food apartheid is. So that make that, that's really a mission of mine. I've had um, ladies that have come up to me and, and said, you know, you really changed my life. I've been vegan two years. And it really makes me feel like what I'm doing is making a difference in communities that really need it because I know they'll help two people. I've had maybe 20 or 30 people uh, over time to tell me how they became vegan based on Urban Eats and the platform we're doing with Vegication. So Vegication is it for me. Uh, would I ever eat animals again? If, I, if the world was in an Armageddon and a pop, apocalypse had happened, I'm not eating animals. I just, I'll just have to go out, you know, slowly and drink water and die because I won't be eating animals. I would never torture. I'm too, I'm too, my eyes are open. I feel like I'm Neo in the Matrix. Like once you're, once you're taking the, the pill, the right pill and you see, there's no way you're going back. There's nothing that would bring, bring me back to eating animals. There's no, there's no health reason. There's no, eco, there's no economical reason. There's no economic reason. There's no health reason. There's no environmental reason. And there's no um, animal reason. There's no reason at all, except for if you're trying to hurt the planet, you're trying to hurt your family, you're trying to hurt the environment, you're trying to hurt uh, the animal, um, you're trying to hurt yourself. If you're doing any of those, then you'd go back. I don't want to do any of those, so I'm not. Yeah, I can go a lot of different ways. Yeah. 
I was a heavy meat, listen, I was not, again, I was totally rose colored glasses, avoiding the, the whole idea. I would never have thought in a million years I'd go vegan. I thought people were weird that were vegan. I thought they were um, infringing on my right to, to, to slop down uh, dead flesh and animals. I thought I was sort gourmet. So I thought I was really doing something well and right. And um, I never would have thought I'd become vegan at all because I was um, uh, totally ignorant and uh, oblivious, intentionally oblivious to the lifestyle I was enjoying. And I surrounded myself with people that were in the same boat. They were all sinking, but we were in the same boat. So um, no, I had no clue. I thought I was doing great by my grass fed uh, um, organics. And no, had no clue. There are a lot of great uh, quotes out there by, um, out there on this movement, in this movement. But one that strikes me specifically and that I use a lot when I'm talking to folks, and I'm paraphrasing a bit, but Dr. Kim Williams uh, says, I know we're gonna die, but I don't wanna be the reason why. So it's something like that. And, and uh, clearly, I use that when I'm talking to folks because yeah, we know we're going to die. There's, there, no one's trying to not die, even though, even with Dr. Michael Greger's book, How Not to Die, he's not saying you're not gonna die. You just don't wanna die of a disease that is preventable, treatable, and reversible based on what we're putting at the end of our fork and other lifestyle factors that we can control. So um, I like that one because it, it's easy to tell people, yeah, I, I know you don't really believe in this, this vegan thing, but don't you believe in your, you know, not having a hand in your own death? Do you believe in that? We can start there. When we look at the vegan movement and we're talking about uh, helping communities, I think that we talk a lot about animals, but we don't really get into the humanity that we share within our own communities. Um, and I think the vegan community can become a little bit competitive and we don't need, to, we're all on the same team. We're all trying to help each other um, from a health perspective, environmental perspective, or see, there are all these little gates around veganism and there shouldn't be. We should be animal activism. That's important. Animal rights is important and saving those lives matter. Saving the lives of people for, for the health reasons matter. So this, this fake uh, idea of plant-based versus vegan, no, stop that. Let's all just be together because we all want to save lives, right? And black lives should matter. Animal lives should matter. Health matters. The environment matters. All that should matter in the vegan diaspora. And, and I feel like we get it too disjointed because we're all trying to go to our different camps. And the real camp is, is health and saving each other and, and just being kind to each other. And I don't think we do that as well as we should. So no to vegans. Stop fighting and fighting and start collectively working on saving lives, all those lives, and all of it matters.